So we are here today here with Colby Phillips, my man, owner of the CrossFit Combine. And uh, we did a little routines kind of webinar thing on Zoom the other day and we wanted to put together a good quality. Actually, we should have recorded it because it was really good. It was good, yeah. But we wanted to get um, a good quality version of that out there. We feel like this is really useful info considering you know where we're at right now there's a lot of uncertainty and we feel like now is the time for people to focus on implementing a routine and there's specific things that we feel like people would benefit from you know um, right now just when we're in a, a situation of uncertainty in general i think it's really beneficial to try to change your perspective and look for the good and look for the innovation and the evolution and the benefits that can come from that uncertainty and uh, one of the things that we definitely can do is focus on a routine around things we feel like are really important and, and beneficial. Um, and there's a concept that we talk about, and I don't know if you remember this from our meditation mindfulness you know, workshops that we do. Um, there's this concept that I call the wisdom of uncertainty. And it's like when we're, there's no way to know what's going to happen in the future. Like we just, I think the best thing that we can do is have a vision for what it is we think we want. And that can change, that can evolve, and we want to take steps moving towards it. And just understand that between here and what it is that we think we want, there's an infinite number of things that can happen. And um, that's where all the adventure and excitement is. And it's impossible to know what's going to happen. So three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, we're going to look back and, and it's going to be a, an interesting adventure. But no matter what, we're going to come out on the other side better and evolved, as long as that's our intention and our perspective. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Right now, it's like there's everything's uncertain. It's almost impossible to know what that three months or even a year from now is going to look like because we, there's a lot of unknown right now. Mm -hmm. But in that, too, is a perfect opportunity to start to cultivate some change because you are in, a, in an area where everything's different, everything's changing. So if you have some healthy habits that you want to start, it would be a good uh, place to start right now because everything's kind of uncertain. There's a lot of change in your life already. And a lot of the hardest part of making change is just making the first step. Yep. So already we're in this space of uncertainty. You might as well just use that and see if you can start to cultivate good habits that you've been trying to do for a while. Yeah, so it's like within uncertainty, embracing this wisdom of uncertainty mm -hmm. and understanding there's a, there's, this is where the adventure of life is. I think what I hear you saying is like we can create some certainty through our routines, which will give yeah. us a little bit of stability. Absolutely. You know? so, yeah. So yeah. So within uncertainty, we want a bit of, of certainty with flexibility. So we talked about this the other day too. Um, I, I feel like, or, or we feel like, I hope you agree with me. I think you do. There's certain things about what we do now for health that are non-negotiable. Yeah, totally. And, and, yep. and because they're non-negotiable, there's a certain level of certainty there, but we also have some flexibility and, and adaptability because no matter where I go, if I go on vacation, if I visit my sister, if I have a schedule that's kind of slightly different, you know, I'm traveling to do a talk or something, there's just certain things about what I do that are, that, that's not gonna change. The time that I do it might change. I may have to change it and adapt it based on my situation, but you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, totally. Yeah, there are things that you can be certain about, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, right. absolutely. So um, we talked about in this webinar, like what is a routine? Um, textbook definition, reliable, predictable course of action or series of habits, and then I threw in, usually that lead to anticipated or expected results. So, I mean, there's a reason we're doing this stuff. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, and then if you want some uh, further reading or resources, I think two really good books, um, Atomic Habits, we both read several yep. times, like super solid. And then, um, I don't know if you've read Tools of Titans. I haven't, yeah, no. It's pretty good. But, you know, you go through, there's so many things that you could focus on when you, when you start to, to pick it. So Tim Ferriss picks apart, um, you know, like uh, thought leaders and people that are experts and top performers in different areas. And, um, and then he tries to tease out what they do on a daily basis or what, what makes them who they are. So there's so many different things that you could throw into the mix. But I feel like focusing on the health piece of it is, is probably the most beneficial place to start because from health everything else comes yeah. yeah if you feel good i think good things will start to happen mm -hmm. yeah so um so just some important concepts to consider uh, major changes only appear major when they happen usually these big changes took a lot of time building up and cumulative so small things added up to get to what what is perceived sometimes as a major change you know when someone looks a certain way it it didn't happen overnight when someone has you know, a certain bedtime or a certain way of eating, like th those things did not happen overnight. They, they were yeah. cultivated over time. 
So, and, so, and along those lines of what we we're talking about, there's so many things we could focus on um, to get to things we want. A lot of us sometimes feel like we have to do this complete overhaul and revamping of our lives. And what we'd say is you just need to be consistent with some basic things and that's it. So we went through some examples the other day. I think, you know, like you would definitely oh, agree yeah. with this, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, a few days of working out, I mean, you feel good from it. You'll get sore, but it, it doesn't really do much. No, as far as what most people are looking for out of a, why would you be doing a workout? Three days is not going to give you anything. Right. Especially, yeah, if you never work out again. Now, three months, you see some pretty significant results, right? Yeah. Three months is what we say when you'll start to actually notice the results yourself. And then three years, that's, I mean, that's complete yeah. transformation. Yeah. 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 And then you think about maybe 30 years, three decades, man. And, yeah. and you've made fitness a part of your life. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're a pretty capable human being at that point. If you're doing the right mm -hmm. stuff. If you're doing and the right stuff that you're teaching. <laughs> totally. And, if, and you've learned a lot along your way. Mm -hmm. And then same thing with eating real food. Eating real food for one day, it's, it's a great start, but doesn't do a whole lot for you, right? Yeah. But three months will do a lot. You start to see some beneficial changes. You, you probably get sold on the idea. Three years of eating real food, three decades of eating real food, especially the way that we teach it, man. Yeah. Again, transformative. Yeah. You're, you're a completely, completely different person. You've, you've actually technically rebuilt yourself. Yeah. And then um, meditation, one meditation session, sure, it feels great. You come out, like you feel like you've done something, you're a little bit calmer and cooler and more collected, but um, three months of meditating, like life-changing. Where are you at now? You're in a couple of years? Two years, I think. Yeah. Two years from the first. And it's still like very new, so... But where you're at is is completely transformed. Totally, I can tell you from just the from first day, yeah. Me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so again, like uh, it's just a lot of this stuff, it just takes time, you know? Um, and uh, we believe that like your direction and your path is what's most important versus where you're at right now and, and getting too stuck on wh where you're not and what you don't have and, and the results that you don't have. You just need to figure out what are the things I need to do consistently to move in the direction of what it is that I think I want. Right. And at some point when you're doing this stuff consistently, you're going to experience um, what I might consider like a breakthrough or a point to where you, you're like, okay, I get it. This is a part of who I am. Like, you know, at this point, fitness is a part of us. Real food is a part of us. Uh, a daily meditation and, and being mindful and having a mindfulness practice is just part of who we are. Yeah. You know, our, our sleep habits. It's just, there's, it's just, there's not even a fight associated with it. No. So um, we would highly recommend, and we've got some workshops that we do throughout the year on setting intentions and having a vision for yourself. We were talking about this before we started about um, how we feel about goals and, and how we feel more important. What's more important is to focus on the kind of person that you want to be in different areas of your life, right? Yeah, exactly what you just, what we just talked about. You would say, okay, if I want, I, instead of having a goal about looking, having a certain weight, be like, what does this person do on a daily basis that I want to be? If that means exercise, cool, I'll just exercise. So it becomes your goal to exercise a little bit every day or get sweaty every day. And then you accumulate days. That is a better thing to think about than just this number, this thing. It's like changing your identity, right? So if I sit here and I think to myself, like, I, I want to be a certain weight. I don't know that that does a whole lot unless that drives you to do something. But, but what we're saying is what we feel like is more beneficial is what is the kind of person that I, I want to be in this mm -hmm. area? The, for a person to look and perform and feel a certain way, that person is probably doing certain things on a daily basis and has been doing those things on a daily basis. Yes, that's the ticket. What, are, what would that kind of person be doing on a daily basis? Now you know what you should be doing on a daily basis. Now you can look at your day and be like, am I making the right choices to become this person I want to be? Yeah. And, and it's, then it's very matter of fact. Well, yeah. this is where I need to improve. Yeah. So then we would say, you know, if you don't have a vision statement for yourself or you don't think about things in this way, maybe just compartmentalize your life into different areas. Like what's the kind of person that you want to be when it comes to health, to nutrition, to fitness, to your personality, um, I threw an immune system, you know, yeah. what, what's the kind of person that you want to be? Um, so as some examples, like instead of, I don't know, having a, a, a deadlifting weight number. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd rather be a, an athlete. That's the kind of person I want to be. Someone who's Absolutely. capable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, instead of, you know, um, in, in the food realm, again, having a scale weight that you want to be, it's really, I, I want to be a real foodie. I want to be someone who eats healthy all the time. Yep. 
And, and then that automatically starts to dictate some of our decisions. You know, when we're in certain moments, we were talking about this yesterday, right? Like I'm in a moment of choice and a real foodie would not do well, that. doesn't eat that. Yeah. yeah. So when you get stuck in those work type situations or those parties and it's like they're offering you these things, you have something way more important than that. So it's just like, no, I, I just don't eat that. It doesn't mean you can't go and have a good time, but you already made the decision up. Yeah. So you don't have this weird... Ah, uh, should I do it? Should I don't? You just know I don't. Yeah, it's like, it's again, coming back to an identity. You're, you're, it's not that you're trying not to eat a donut. No, you're a freaking real foodie. Yeah, I'm a real foodie. I, I just don't, don't do eat that. donuts. That's not me. Yeah, you know? So, um, and then uh, to be vibrant, clean, and clear, uh, you know, someone. I'm someone who sleeps well. I prioritize sleep. That's who I am. You know, I'm not trying to get to bed early. It's like, this is who I am. This is my identity. Mm-hmm. And then um, to be calm, cool, clear, even keel, I am someone who practices mindfulness. I'm someone who meditates. So and just some ideas about thinking about the kind of person you want to be versus getting hung up on numbers and goals. And, and not that those aren't useful sometimes. Um, so we were talking about like what would be the most important things to factor into a routine. And um, we'd say we have four main pillars or foundations yeah. that we try to teach and work with our people. And that would be um, real food, sleep. Uh, a mindfulness practice or presence, and then uh, moving, I like That's the it. way you say it, getting sweaty most days. Yeah. Having some kind of a, a workout program in place. So so if we take those foundations, there's certain things that we want to pull from that that we could implement into a, uh, a relatively daily routine. Um, as far as food goes, we feel like that's relatively elegant and simple, especially if you're plugged into the SHT info because we just don't obsess about food that much. We eat one or two times a day, and it's just not something that we're re- really needing to plan that much as veterans. If you're new to it, then there are some things that you probably want to think about, and we'll talk about that. Um, when it comes to sleep, you know, there's some things we want to throw in here. We want to have a consistent wake time, a consistent bedtime, and probably a time that we start to wind down in the evenings to get ready for bed because that's going to facilitate better sleep. And then when it comes to presence, having a daily devotion or quiet time. I mean, we're big believers in a formal meditation practice, mm-hmm. but having just some time where you have some time to yourself. Um, and, and sit and you're just and you're there and you're present and you have your own little personal process whatever that might be um, and then a day you know getting sweaty most days some kind yep. of a fitness routine so that would be what we consider the most important things to plug into a quote-unquote routine consistent waking time some kind of quiet time some kind of movement um, making sure that real food is a part of that if you need to schedule it in a winding down time and a consistent bedtime and, um, and we had some really good discussion on the Zoom conference the other day where we had some bonus things that we might consider throwing in. But I think what I want people to be careful of is trying to do too much at once and then not being able to accomplish all that and getting a little bit frustrated and derailed from it and throwing your hands up and kind of walking away from the whole process. So maybe just focusing on these health things and then adding to that over time if you feel like things like solitary walk is important, reading. I, I remember for a long time I was trying to mandate and squeeze in like a certain amount of reading and some other stuff and I realized look the most important thing is these foundational things and then the space in between I can fill in as I feel like appropriate or something like that Um, you know getting sunlight a lot of days maybe your hobbies social connection we found was really important to several people so maybe that's something that you have to have as part of your foundational routine is, is some kind of social connection yep you can get lost, too, if you start reading all these books and stuff. I think that's what's really good is just try to focus on one thing at a time. If, the, if you have this whole list here and you're like, man, I don't really am not feeling any of this right now. I got so much work to do. Just pick one. Mm-hmm. Kind of make that your focus for a while until, like you said, it turns into more of that's just who you are. Mm-hmm. And then you can pick something else. But yep. I know you can fall into little holes of like there's so much to do on your self-work that it becomes kind of a stressor when yeah. it shouldn't be. Yeah. You should yeah. take it in chunks. Especially if you read a book like Atomic Habits or the uh, Tools of Titans, you're like, oh my God, there's all these great things that I should be doing or could be doing. And um, yeah, just focusing on, especially like, again, you focus on the things that make you healthy and happy, your vibrancy, your clarity, your energy, like you, then it's possible or you're more capable to do more things. If you're yeah. So. So one thing that we talked about was trying to, this is something that has been extremely beneficial for myself and people that I work with. And this is basically just visualizing a day, an ideal day, like where this stuff fits in. So um, we have this little worksheet as a downloadable PDF and in, in the resources, the posts associated with this. And the first thing that we'd recommend doing is take, take an account of your day right now 
and assessing all the different things that you do pretty consistently so you can get a, a, a visual of what things you're doing on a daily basis. And maybe you'll find that some of those things are um, non-negotiable, you know, maybe um, if you're working or something like yeah. that, right? But then there's things in there that you find maybe they're, they're not like very useful or they're not, or maybe they're optional or something. And then we have a column where we have a space for you to fit in these important uh, health habits. And again, like Colby was saying, like you may just want to focus on a few at first, but the, we feel like that list, that first foundational list is the things that ultimately we all want to have in place. And so um, we have on this sheet a space for you to write out what you're currently doing, where you can fit in these um, routines, and then we have a list of those foundational routines and some ideas for some other things to consider. And, um, and what we know to be extremely beneficial is writing down your intentions. So once you figure out where those things are going to fit, um, and maybe this is somewhat tentative and experimental, then we recommend, and this is something that we got from Atomic Habits, having an implementation intention where you actually write down exactly what you're going to do, the activity, the time, and the location, um, an optional with who. With who. And, uh, and you're going to have that written down for these different uh, habits so that you have a clear intention of what it is, and, and you can read through that until it becomes a part of who you are. We have some suggestions for it, such as I will wake up at a specific time from my bed. That's the location. Maybe that's something else for you. Um, I will sit for quiet time at a certain location and think about where that's going to be. Okay, so I got a time, and then I also need to think about, like, where am I going to do that? Is it going to be in a specific room, on my couch, outside on the patio? Um, and then same thing with a workout. Like, I will work out at a specific time in a specific location and maybe with specific people. You know? yep. So right now we've got these great Zoom classes going on. So you can choose your time that's conducive to you, and you know where you're going to have to do that at most days, and then maybe you're with a certain group of people, which kind of inspires you and motivates Absolutely. you a little bit. Yep. And then um, eating real food. Again, if this isn't something that's part of your daily uh, routine right now, then you can probably plug in one or two meals and where that's going to fit in, um, considering everything else. And then we would recommend having a winding down time that's an hour and a half to two hours before your projected bedtime where... Um, this is your, your time to start to, to uh, mellow out and just minimize your stimulus and stuff like that because that really helps facilitate really good sleep. And then um, also uh, bedtime that gives you seven hours of sleep or seven hours of bedtime. Um, and then um, something really useful is to maybe pair some of those activities or those habits with something to look forward to. So do you do any of this? Do you have anything that you're like, um, you know, after I'm waiting till this for me to do this? Like I try to wait to have my coffee until after I work out. And that's like I'm, my reward. Like I'm excited, you know, to go on my walk and, and do my quiet time. Do you have anything that you like kind of postpone a little bit, delayed gratification? Um, let's see. Yeah, right now it would be like in the evenings, just my evening wind down time. Yeah. Like I put that, I push that back as much as I can. I'll make sure I get all my stuff done. And then it's like, okay, cell phone goes away and I'm done for the night. Like, yeah. so uh, does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that is part of it. And, and this is really useful for people who don't have things um, locked in like we do, right? So it's like if you're, if you're struggling to like get up at a certain time. Well, you know, I love waking up and listening to my books and podcasts because that's the only time of day that I really have a chance to do it. So it's part of my motivation to get up at a certain time because I have this little, this little window as I'm tinkering around the kitchen and doing my dishes and stuff that I can actually listen to something. Yeah. And then, like I said before, like um, after the workout, I wait to have my caffeine <clears throat> until around 7 a.m. So like I'm having my coffee on my walk with my meditation and I really, really look forward to that first couple. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I look forward to my cup of coffee too. It's, but I think for me, it's just the motivation in the morning. I love mornings. So I really like getting in bed, especially when I'm able to get in bed early. So I that's know. exactly what we're saying. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is like your motivation, the thing that you're rewarding yourself with getting in bed on time is you know that you're going to be waking up at a certain time feeling amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe that's huge. There, there's a lot of different things you could plug in here, you know, so like your consistent bedtime gives you the ability to get up early and enjoy that day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so maybe just thinking about like, what are some things that we can pair with these habits that will give you a reward or something to look forward to, to give you more of an incentive to do those things? 
Heck yeah. And yeah. that's super creative. I mean, that's very personal. So, so in that little worksheet, we have, again, um, the current things that you're doing, which some of those might be optional, maybe bring some awareness to some things that you could kind of toss out, and then where you want to plug in some of these foundational health habits, and then maybe even associate some kind of a reward, especially as you're trying to get these little habits going. Um, and then we also have, as part of that, uh, a worksheet for implementation intentions, and we have eight different spaces, even though we're only really talking about uh, six foundational uh, little habits, and then we have some example verbiage at the bottom. So. I think that's a useful little resource. Heck yeah, got some good yeah. feedback. Write them down. Like, do it if if you're watching this. Like, do the little writing exercises. That's powerful stuff. Crucial, absolutely crucial. We were talking about that in the uh, webinar. I think Suzanne yeah. had brought it up, and um, I was the same way. You know, she had mentioned. Yeah. You know, I was so resistant to writing things down and writing down my visions and doing a gratitude journal. And as soon as she read some research on it and she started doing it, she was like, "Wow, this really does make a difference." It's, it comes back to it was a little different. You know, it's something that you're not used to doing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of their resistance. But then when you start doing it, you're, you realize, ah, oh, how powerful this really is. Mm -hmm. And then you can keep doing it. But yep. it is a fight. I don't, I'm not sure why. I know. Everything everyone says is so powerful, but yep. Yep. I still struggle with it. I know. Like I writing too. stuff down. <laughs> I do too. I do too. I've re, um, you know, with our morning process, I always do like gratitude. And then I do my meditation. And then I sit there and think about what I want. And, um, and for the longest time, I was doing a gratitude journal, and I would break out a blank sheet of paper and write stuff down. I kind of moved towards just doing it in my mind, and now I'm going back to the journaling. Yeah, you know, and yeah. It's been really great. So, um, so something else that we talked about was um, environment design. And this is like basically setting up your environment to support what it is that you're trying to do. Um, setting yourself up for success before and after these different habits and routines. So... For a consistent waking time, obviously having an alarm would be beneficial. Um, at some point, I think for most of us, like we don't need an alarm. We wake up before our alarm. Um, and I think having your clothes laid out for the next day, um, having the rest of the room really nice and neat, this makes a big difference for me personally. Like when I wake up and it's just like, all I got to do is make my bed. Everything else looks nice and tight and straight. And it's just like, oh, this feels really great, you know. And then definitely want to make your bed when you leave. You do that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the, one of the first things. It's because you're do, you've done something, right? When your day starts, you've done something that, I don't know, it looks good. You've, like, accomplished something already. You've given yourself you moment, yeah, yeah. momentum to do good things. And when you come to your bedroom later for sleep or whatever it is, it's like, oh, feels good. Yeah, it feels great. <laughs> yeah. You know? so, um, so that would be some good environment design stuff for waking up. And then for a, a, a quiet time, just thinking about where this spot is that you want it to be. It can be anywhere. Um, I prefer outdoors simply because there's an openness to it. You have access to a lot of um, natural sounds. But just put some thought into where do I want my little special 5 minute, 10 minute, 15, 20 minute window to be. Um, and then we recommend having just this little process. And, and we talk about that in some other classes like gratitude, meditate, envisioning, thinking about what's but really, I think what's important is having a, a dedicated area that is going to be your space. It doesn't have to be a dedicated room because some of us don't have that. But just knowing where you're going to do this. Yeah. Having an idea where you're going to do it. Um, and then same thing for fitness. Just knowing where you're going to do it. Like right now, you've got a lot of people that are working out in their garages and stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think, and we talked about that too. Like it's weird working out in your house, but try to... That's why you do want to try to pick a designated room. And with our Zoom classes, you know, this was very new for us, but try to pick a spot that you have plenty of space, that you can lay out some type of mat so you can get on the ground, and then make sure you can position your camera so we can see you, mm -hmm. so you can still get the benefit of us, of us being able to coach you. Yeah. So it is a learning curve, but setting up that space is important. Yeah. And having it set up beforehand or having the time to do it. Yeah. And then when you're done with it, like putting stuff away, having it ready for the next time. For the so next you time come back come. in and you're like, all right, this is part of my little routine. I'm going to set this up here. Blah, blah, blah. It's very familiar and comfortable. Absolutely. You know? And I'm just picturing like, um, you know, I was like watching Ryan Duplex and them. They're in their living room. They got the couch and all this stuff in the background. But they're making it work. They're pulling out whatever they need. Yeah. And then I, ideally, I'm assuming as soon as they get done, they put that stuff up and it's ready for the next time. Totally. Yeah. Putting some thought into how does this, how am I going to set this up and then do it the same, especially when it's new. Oh, that didn't work. We'll adjust the next time and eventually you'll make it this really awesome little workout place. Yep. Yep. 
Um, and then we talked about with real food, again, a lot of us that are veterans with the SHT, it's like, you know, it's just kind of part of who we are. We don't really stress out about food too much. We eat once or twice a day with no snacking. But then some people are, are beginning their journey or somewhere in that beginning phase trying to figure things out. So maybe just planning for your one or two meals in a day, having some snacks available just in case. Um, you know, maybe the night before, I think it's really useful with my private clients to think about, all right, what are we doing tomorrow? What are we doing for breakfast? What are we doing for lunch? What are we doing for dinner? What are we going to have available for snacks if we just happen to need those things? I like non-perishable meat snacks like Epic Bars and beef jerky and stuff. But, um, but aside from that, just planning and thinking about what you're going to do for the next day. Um, by the way, if I don't have meat sit, you know, out frozen, then I'm in, the in the evening I'm in a pinch because I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to put some meat out. Now I have nothing to cook. You know? So just putting some thought into the next day. And then I think it's really ideal to have a really clean, open kitchen um, so that when you come into it, it's very welcoming for cooking. And then as soon as you're done cooking, not putting off the cleanup until later, like trying to get that done right away so that, again, the next time you come to cook, it looks very welcoming. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then we talked a little bit about um, winding down, and I think it's really beneficial. We covered this in our um, sleep workshop seminar. One of the most powerful things you can do is put an alarm on your phone for one hour to two hours before your projected bedtime and have that alarm tell you that it's time to get ready for bed. And what this will do is it will give you a non-conscious cue or an embedded command that's very difficult to undo. So as I'm going throughout my evening, if I'm not aware of what time it is and all of a sudden my alarm goes off, you know, it's time to get ready for bed, and I'm like, oh, I can't unread that. So at a non-conscious level, I already start to get in this mindset of, Man, I guess gotta get ready, ready for bed, bed you know. Yeah. And even if I'm out and about, like it's just like, all right. right. <clears throat> and maybe I push that a little bit because it's a social situation or something. But but regardless, it, it's really beneficial to see that because you can't unsee it once you've seen it. Um, right now, I am really big into an evening ritual. Do you have like a ritual or anything that you do in the evenings or like some kind of process that you do? Um, in the e that's where I can get better at in the evenings. Usually, it's just hang out with Yessie. Um, right now, we're getting really into uh, playing chess, so that's kind of almost turned into what we do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we'll cook dinner, and then we'll eat dinner and have a chess match, and that kind of goes until wherever. And then after that, it's pretty much time to, and then I go to bed. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, playing a game or something, like anything that, again, maybe you look forward to. Yeah, as soon as, yeah. As soon as you see that alarm, dimming your lights making that conducive to sleep. Um, ideally, you're staying off your computers and cell phones and things. If you're gonna be on on computer or watching a movie or something, we recommend having blue light blocking glasses to filter out the white light um, or the blue light frequency that kind of confuses your body about what time of day it is. I've gotten uh, really big into having a cup of tea in the evenings. I love it right now with a little bit of honey um, after dinner and then um, reading sometimes, listening to a podcast, like you yep. said, doing yep. some games or something like that. I love uh, now also getting outside and enjoying the twilight after the sun's gone down, although that's getting later. Um, and then your bedroom should be the place that you sleep, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it, right? If you got your yeah. TV and other stuff going on in there, at an unconscious level, you're associating that space with something else. And part of this environment design discussion is understanding that we want certain locations to be associated with certain things to the best of our abilities, although, you know, like working out in the living room like you just have to do what you got to do but like definitely your bedroom needs to be a place that your your body and your mind associate sleep with um, so we talked about a couple of things that we talk about in some of our other progressions like operation lights out um, when you go to bed making sure you're turning off all your stuff and your electronics are away from your bed and then um, we recommend putting your phone to sleep because um, a lot of people sleep with the phone in the bed and they have this tendency to roll over and look at their phone and see what time it is which then you it, you kind of yeah. embed this. Yeah, checking it. Then you will. Like, you grab the phone. It's not just check the time. Then it's check Instagram. Then it's, yeah. and Then, then you turn it on. I can't yeah. sleep. Now then you got a couple the, text uh, messages. Yeah. And it'll mm -hmm. just, it'll cyclone. And that whole, like, some people like to see, oh, I got three hours left to sleep. But what happens is, at an unconscious level, you have this little countdown going on, and it's occupying your mind. And so um, putting your phone, you know, once you decide to come in and go to bed, putting your phone to sleep putting it up on the, on the uh, bathroom counter. If you need to have it available so that you can hear a phone call, you can still receive phone calls maybe, but you just need to have it out of, hand, out of reach. Um, and then the final thing we talked about was how a lot of times when we start to embark on new things like this, um, 
a lot of it, it's like this this perception of okay this is you know I have to do these things I need to try to get these implemented in my life and what we were saying is it's you get to do these things mm-hmm. because you're gonna feel freaking amazing it's actually a huge privilege to understand what it is that we need to do and how you feel afterwards is great yeah totally it, and that's a hard thing and maybe you I if you start to feel like oh, I have to do this and I have to do this. Let's just, you know, just take a step back and be like, all right, what's one thing that I would want to do that I get to do so I can feel this way mm-hmm. tomorrow? And yeah. then just taking it in one step at a time. Small chunks, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, we've got a really good resource, uh, PDF uh, worksheet and the little implementation intentions worksheet. And I think that's about everything that we talked about at that little webinar thing, right? You got anything else? No, no, nothing else really. Just I would just recommend really writing down, especially over the weekend. If you have a lot of time on your hands already because you're quarantined, now you have any more time, it's the weekend. And I would just write down some things and then pick a couple things and, and start working on them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, cool. And um, man, prioritize those big four. Real food, um, optimizing sleep, some kind of a quiet time, get sweaty most days. Been loving the Zoom workouts with the combine. Yeah. I'm, I'm feel like I'm getting fit as hell. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty um, sore, and they've been a lot so, of fun. So We're cool. still having so fun sore. in classes. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really impressed. Really impressed at how those things. Are. I'm excited to go in there and just see who's in and talk to them because I haven't seen them in so long. So, yeah, it's been awesome. All right, cool, man. Thanks for being in, uh, on here with us, and um, we'll do some more of these coming up in the near future. Absolutely, solid stuff. Yeah. All right. All right. Later, y'all.